<clears throat> All right, so on our agenda, we had a 6.40 p.m. hearing, which was a continuation of the town of Waitley's application for a special permit to build a booster pump station. But the applicant has requested a continuance until our August 5th meeting. So we will hear it on August 5th. We have two minutes to go before we can start the seven. Okay, great. This is Jared Glansberger just uh, saying that I'm here. Yes, we can see you. <laughs> Those virtual backgrounds are so wild. <laughs> did it disappear? You did. You walk away and you it's like you're a ghost. Well, I know I disappeared, but did the background disappear? No, 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 no. One minute to go. <laughs> this might be a good time for me to mention to people that if, if you want to speak, would you please identify yourselves for the minutes? Sometimes you can't always tell who's here from the labels on the connections. Um, yes, and if you do want to speak, you want to remember to unmute, but I'll remind you if you don't. <laughs> okay, it is seven o'clock. All right, Mary, do you want to read the legal notice? <clears throat> Be right with you. Sorry, <laughs> I was set up for another one. I'm gonna have to shrink my, I'll collect it from my file. I, I can maybe bring up the legal notices if you want. Uh, it, Would that help? Here, I'm, now that I'm into my computer, I can, okay. I can get it. Yep, no problem. Okay, this notice was written for June 3rd, so that's what's in it, but then we continued it. So we have a notice that reads, notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 at 7 p.m. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect, and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. On April 15th, 2021, Sam Hanmer applied for a special permit on behalf of Debilitating Medical Conditions Treatment Centers Incorporated to become a marijuana manufacturer and process cannabis at an existing engine repair shop at Three River Road in the AR1 zone. 
application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Whateley zoning bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspubliknotices.org. And there follows the access code information for joining this meeting by computer or by telephone. Uh, signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals. And it ran in the, in the Greenfield Recorder on May 20th and the 27th. Here on behalf of the petitioner. Great. Uh, hello, I'm Chris Chamberlain. I'm a civil engineer with Berkshire Design Group uh, here representing debilitating medical condition treatment centers, which from now on we'll refer to as DMCTC. Um, and also here is Jared Glansberger with DMCTC. Um, and we are um, proposing a project that would create a marijuana manufacturer at a uh, property at Three River Road. Um, and uh, critically, um, this is a special permit that would seek to convert an existing non-conforming use, that being an auto repair shop in the AR1 zone, into a different non-conforming use. Um, and I'm gonna provide an overview of the project and then I'm happy to take questions. Um, and well, I will share. The first question. Yes. Uh, do you have any issues with the legal notice and the way it was written? Uh, we do not. And let me ask you this, DMCT. Is that the name that you are also using for your CCC application? Uh, Jared, I think it's best to confirm that, but I believe that it is. Yes, uh, Debilitating Medical Condition Singular Treatment Centers, Inc. Uh, we acknowledge that it is a mouthful and at some point in the future, we hope to uh, change that name, but that is the current name for the entity that supplies the license. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> it says Sam Hammer applied for the special permit on, on your behalf. Who's Sam? So the uh, entity debilitating medical condition treatment centers, Inc. Um, went through a, um, he, he's another manager that's part of this entity. Um, and he at that time was authorized to sign this application. Um, and I'm here representing the entity. And now the um, owner. I'm uh, sorry, that question was a little garbled. Yeah, um, the property owner, the place is familiar to many of us who've taken our lawnmowers here, but what's the official name of the property owner? The property owners are uh, A.I. Annis and Carol Annis. And do you have a legal agreement with them? We do, yes. And what type of agreement is that? We have both an, uh, an LOI and a lease and a purchase option. Letter of intent, a lease and a purchase option. Um, yep. So at some point following this hearing, we'd like to see, um, and you can redact confidential information, but we'd like to see a signed, uh, fully signed version of whatever is the best of those three weeks uh it's currently in effect the yep so we have an assigned loi and assigned lease and the purchase option is a component of the lease yes yeah, so why don't you guys copy of why don't you guys copy of all three again you can redact price information yeah it's really just two, two, two documents. The, the purchase option is a feature of the, of the lease itself. But yes, I will, I will redact the commercial information and uh, send the kind of the high level terms showing that we have control of the site. Excellent. Okay, so Chris, the floor is yours. Sure, and then just one other caveat to the um, land agreement is that the property is being leased by a separate legal entity that's affiliated with DMCTC, which is known as uh, Midco CHY. Um, actually, Jared, you, you better give the official name of it. So I don't yeah. Know. yeah, so, so the, there is a, um, as with many of these uh, cannabis enterprises, there's separation between the property uh, holding company and the licensed entity. 
And so we're structured in a very similar way. I think you'll have seen it with Canna Select um, and, uh, and others that have come to Waitley for this purpose. And so the entity that uh, has signed the uh, document signed the back agreement with the license owning entity, and we can provide that as well. Well, I want to caution you right now <clears throat> that when the CCC sends us a request to confirm that whoever's on there roster as their applicant has received proper permits from our boards in town. If we have, if we don't recognize that name on the CCC roster, we're not going to say yes, yep. that, that we've given a, a, a permit to that. Fully, yep, fully aware of that. It right. is Debilitating Medical Condition Treatment Centers, Inc. that's applying for the special permit, and it is DMCTC, that same entity, that's applying for the state uh, license. All right, yeah, so... Send those along, we take a look at it and uh, appreciate it. Great, yep, thank you. We will be sure to do that. Okay, um, and if, uh, if I could be um, made a co-host to share my screen, I do have uh, graphics of the plans that will help discuss the project. You are co-host. Great. Is this Chris? Yes, okay. yes. Yes. Um, good. So to, uh, for orientation purposes, um, we are located here on River Road on this parcel here, uh, which we are referring to as Three River Road. Um, the legal address, which was noted in the application on the abutters list, is Five River Road, which is the street number associated with the existing residence on the house. Three River Road is associated with the business, the existing repair shop. Um, and I will note that a portion of the property uh, is located in Hatfield. There are no existing structures in Hatfield and the building will not be expanded into there. Um, there is some site work, which we'll discuss in a moment. And I do want to um, say here early on that um, we had reached out to the Hatfield Planning Board and I know Stephanie is uh, listening in, uh, the chair of the Hatfield Planning Board, um, to discuss whether that limited site work uh, that was located on the Hatfield portion would trigger any um, permitting in Hatfield. Um, as of today, uh, we've received an opinion from town council over in Hatfield um, that, quote, active uses that are associated with our primary use on the Three River Road site um, would trigger uh, land use permitting in Hatfield. Um, and the opinion went on to say that at least based upon the information uh, that the attorney was reviewing, um, it may be the case that an existing non-conforming use does not exist on the Hatfield property, which would be a prerequisite to convert into this new non-conforming use. Um, we think that you know, there is some, uh, some uh, evidence and uh, discussion to be had around whether in fact this piece of the property has been used actively as part of the repair shop, um, but we're still sort of reviewing that opinion um, and are gonna be working with Hatfield on the implications. Um, so what that means is that one of two things will happen. Either we will need to uh, apply for permits to allow the site work to occur on this property separate from the Waitley permit process, um, or if it is determined that the storage of, um, of equipment and uh, to be repaired and for other uses on this property is not enough to create the existing non-conforming use on this property, then we'll have to make some adjustments to the site plan um, in order to conform with that. So it's uh, another complication of this project, um, but we are, again, still reviewing that, that decision that we saw today um, to try to... Um, uh, what, um, what our response will be to it. Well, two comments on that. Who's the Waitley, excuse me, who's the Hatfield Town Council? Um, I, I believe- Tom, Tom Mullen, Attorney Tom Mullen. Yeah. Okay. Are you the planning board chair? Hi, yes, I'm Stephanie Slish, uh, chair of the Hatfield Planning Board, yes. Welcome to the Waitley ZBA. <laughs> Thank you. All right, great. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. 
OK, um, so uh, as I mentioned, um, and then this is an aerial photo uh, current of the site. Um, and so the boundary of the property, which I'll show a property plan of in just a moment, is approximately here. Um, this is a, an exist, the, this, both these structures are located on the same property. Uh, this is an existing single family residence where the property owners live. And this is uh, the CNA repair shop, which is their business located on the same parcel. Um, and I think uh, it sounds like uh, most of the board is uh, familiar with, with that business. Um, the existing property is in the AR1 zone. It's within 400 feet of River Road, which puts it in that zone. The proposed use, as I mentioned, is marijuana manufacturing, which is not allowed in AR1. And so what we are seeking is a special permit based on a determination of ZBA that the proposed use is not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use. Uh, and then as uh, required by the bylaw, that the change would not increase the danger of groundwater pollution. Um, and we'll discuss a little bit of that uh, in a moment, but we do believe uh, in our opinion that uh, the proposed project clears those hurdles. Excuse me, Chris, what was the last one you said it, it would uh, not uh, give rise to danger? Uh, does not increase the danger of groundwater pollution, which I believe oh, okay. comes Thank from the text in the bylaw. Um, there's, there's just that two part determination in order to grant the special permit for the non-conforming use. And so I will uh, flip to our plan set, which was submitted. This is a property plan of the lot. Uh, as I mentioned, the existing house and the business are both located on the lot on the Waitley side of the line. Um, what we are showing here with this dashed line and the hatching is the lease area that would be leased from the property owners uh, to uh, for the use by DMCTC, uh, the existing, uh, the property owners would continue to live in the existing residence and the portion of the site outside of the lease limits would remain unchanged. So they retain the house uh, shed and some parking associated with that house. So you're gonna divide that lot in two? Um, so we, uh, under the lease uh, period of time, which is uh, sort of the, the initial period because there's an option but not an obligation to purchase the property, just this portion of the property would be leased. Uh, my understanding is the option would be to purchase the entirety of the property, but Jared can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, the option to purchase is the leased area. Not the entire area. Sorry, say it again. That is correct. Yeah, not the entire parcel. Um, and I believe that there are part um, provisions in the bylaw that if the land changes hands, then we need to uh, renew the special permit at that time. Um, so I would imagine that the exercise of that option actually purchasing the land would require us to come back here um, to review that new situation. Uh, do both do both uh, portions of the property conform to <laughs> conform to the regulations? I mean, you're talking about dividing the property now for two separate uses, residential and a, I mean, is there enough land and frontage and everything to make two lots there basically? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, th this is where if we were in person, uh, I would sidebar with Jared. Unfortunately, that, that's a challenge in this Zoom. Um, he and I had not discussed the dividing of the lot upon purchase of the property. Um, and so there is a zoning issue with that. Um, so what I would say is that yeah. the project that we're proposing is on leased property of a lot that will remain that's, uh, that's, undivided. That's right. Okay, okay. That's, that's right. Yes. And so we'd like to consider this a, as an undivided property. We're in conversation with uh, Carol and AI about um, ways to kind of bring, if we were to execute that purchase option and in a hypothetical that I, I, I think we, we shouldn't contemplate now, you know, how, what that would look like and, and what, um, what options we would have. But for the time being, 
we very much anticipate operating under the lease terms uh, with the property uh, kept as a whole. All right, so I think that at least simplifies it from the board's perspective. We'll treat this as a proposed lease situation. Okay. Um, and so um, in the proposed project, um, we would see significant building uh, renovation, but all to occur within the existing building footprint. Um, I'll advance here. Um, we can come back to that figure in a moment um, to show, sorry, actually I'll switch to, to the rendered version, which is a little bit friendlier to look at on the screen. Um, and so the orange that you see here is the footprint of the existing building, which is a bit of a complicated structure that apparently was, was built over time. Um, associated with it is existing concrete paving and asphalt paving for the existing site. Uh, the intention is to, again, renovate uh, the building within the existing footprint. Uh, the exterior improvements, uh, we would uh, retain uh, essentially the same site on the north side of the building. On the south side, the proposal is to install a porous gravel surfacing. Um, that's uh, both because it helps with uh, stormwater management and water quality, uh, which are good things, um, but also so that we can meet the impervious coverage area um, of the zoning requirements. Uh, and we had discussion with the planning board that that permeability is the key component of that uh, coverage measurement. Um, and this portion of the site is to provide uh, access to parking um, as well as storage for um, mobile refrigeration units, which we'll talk about in a moment that are portions that are part of this uh, proposed plan. Where are you with the planning board in their process? Uh, we have a hearing on Tuesday. That's the first hearing? Uh, yes, we submitted, um, I think about the same I uh, must have submitted in uh, late May and they their next hearing got kicked because of town meeting, I think. So yes, our first hearings on Tuesday. Okay. Um, as you can imagine, if you're familiar with the site, uh, this project will include significant cleanup, uh, removal of all the vehicles and equipment that are stored on the site, uh, as well as uh, removal of uh, invasive species and other overgrowth in this portion of the site, uh, and that will be replaced with landscape screening. The operation anticipates a staff of 10 to 12 employees to operate year round. Um, the uh, overall plan here is that the uh, nature of the outdoor grow operation that's been permitted at Seven River Road is such that the harvest comes in all at once um, those plants are then processed and dried um, and then are ready to be sent to a manufacturing location for the extraction of oils, which is then turned into a number of different products. Um, with the outdoor grow operation, as you can imagine, um, a lot of volume of material comes in all at once, um, whereas it's beneficial on the manufacturing side to have a steady flow of product that allows uh, more efficiency of operation. It allows uh, more even staffing. It allows uh, higher caliber staffing because you're employing year round. Um, and it's also better for market to not be going with all of your product all at once. And so the intention is to use uh, refrigeration units, uh, container sized refrigeration units to uh, pick up product that has been dried at Seven River Road and bring them to Three River Road where they would then be drawn down um, over the course of the full year such that uh, the product is exhausted by the time the next um, harvest comes back around. Uh, refrigeration then is an important component of the operation uh, because the biomass that's come in from harvest has a shelf life and it either needs to be processed uh, in a short period of time or uh, kept in cold storage until such time as it is processed. Um, we did explore ways of building that into the interior of the building. Um, if there are questions about that process, Jared's probably better than I am to discuss it, uh, but it was just found that it was not feasible um, to provide the cold storage that was necessary on the interior. Additionally, um, 
carrying the uh, transporting the biomass over to the building would create significantly more trips back and forth as those would have to be done in small loads to be loaded into the buildings. Um, and so that's uh, resulted in DMCTC's uh, proposal um, to in these uh, in these dashed square lines to um, use uh, mobile cold storage units that could be brought between Seven River Road and Three River Road um, in order to store that biomass while it waits for processing. What is the uh, state of the um, uh, Seven River Road project or the, what stage is it in, in its permitting process? Um, so, I, I'm, go ahead. I'm uh, sorry, Jared, I didn't, I didn't. I couldn't quite hear that. I, I, I think it was, what's the stage of the road project? Yes. Um, we uh, are very happy uh, to report that we anticipate final licensure as of July 15th. Um, so that would allow us to put plants in the ground uh, as, of, uh, as of that date. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um. So as I was mentioning, um, 10 to 12 year on employees, uh, product pickups uh, are anticipated to be one to two times per day maximum. Um, those are typically occurring in small uh, unmarked vehicles, uh, sprinter vans or cargo vans. Uh, the product ships light, as you may recall from, from previous uh, similar projects. Um, and very few visitors, this uh, facility is secure. It's not open to the public, there are no tours. Um, Additional, sorry, I thought I heard someone jumping in. Um, we will have site lighting for safety in parking areas that would be full cutoff dark sky compliant pole lights on timers. Um, there's a requirement for that safety lighting in the parking areas where employees are coming in and out. Um, aside from that uh, and the minimum required by building code, there would be no exterior lighting. There will be um, security cameras, uh, as is typical with this type of facility, that uh, will be infrared uh, that can operate on just the ambient light um, that is available in order to create a secure site. Overall, we have a multifaceted security plan that's based on those cameras, uh, on-site staff, remote monitoring, um, what, what sort of the standard operating procedures for these facilities. Um, we are certainly uh, happy to answer questions if there are about some of the specifics of that security plan, but obviously portions of it must remain confidential. Um, we have met with the police department to review some of the security procedures. Um, and at least as of that meeting, there were no comments. Uh, we anticipate that the town would require a letter from the police department um, verifying that they find the plan acceptable and that we are certainly um, happy to pursue. Um, would like that letter. I was going to also note that we, we walked the site with uh, Chief Savini on uh, June 2nd or 3rd, I, I can't recall, um, and with uh, Chief Hannum on uh, 2nd or 3rd, I, I can't recall again, um, and have been in active discussion with do both departments about our plans. And I did have something about fire department later on, but uh, the two comments that came from the fire department is that they want to ensure that there's a Knox box uh, for access um, and was uh, had questions about the potential of sprinkler systems, and we confirmed for the chief that this this building would be sprinklered um, and connected to the town water supply for that, uh, which were satisfactory answers. And again, we'll continue uh, to review the safety plan with the fire department um, as as this project hopefully moves forward. And and also just to note that there would be um, some amount of synergy between. Seven River Road uh, security infrastructure, um, which is immediately behind this property and the Three River Road property um, that, you know, when we have a density of um, kind of in security infrastructure, there are benefits from, from both. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you anticipate processing marijuana from any other source than Seven River Road? Yes. Yes, you do. Yeah. So marijuana is actually going to be trucked into the processing building from somewhere else. At some point in the future, um, you know, if the economics make sense, um, then that would be that would be great. 
um, and that's something that we would like to explore. Um, we, you know, as a, as the operator of Seven River Road, we know with certainty that we'll be able to process our own, um, and we'd like to explore the possibility of uh, of processing other people's uh, biomass as well if we're given that opportunity. Thank you. Um, so the manufacturing process itself is centered on the extraction of oils from the plant material, as I mentioned. Um, this is a very clean laboratory-like setting that this has to occur in. Um, there's essentially pharmaceutical level uh, testing of the product. Um, imagine that there's some mystery around what these sorts of facilities look like. Uh, this is not necessarily exactly the same as what would go in Three River Road, but this is a typical setup. I've been in um, a few different uh, marijuana operations, mostly cultivation, um, but they all they are all gleaming, um, much like you see here. Um, again, uh, much more of a laboratory than what, what might be thought of when the word manufacturing gets thrown around. Um, and obviously, as I think we all have become familiar, the CCC has uh, very high standards for testing um, and monitoring and uh, security and, and all of the operations that would occur inside this facility. Um, the manufacturing process utilizes butane as a solvent uh, in a closed loop system. So essentially what happens is that uh, the, the solvent um, causes the oils from the plant and biomass to leave the plant material and become suspended in the solvent, which is run through a separate process that then drops those oils out so that they can be used. The butane itself does not come out of that process. It's entirely closed loop, um, except, and the only time that, uh, that it is dealt with directly is uh, when those, uh, that solvent is refreshed, where it's uh, removed at, uh, under controlled uh, environment. Um, but there are no discharges from the process. There are no drains. Um, uh, there, uh, it's, uh, it's um, an entirely contained um, uh, process uh, that occurs inside these uh, facilities. What about odors? So we, we will talk about odor control. Um, it is certainly uh, important, it exists. It is less than the cultivation facilities um, because the dried plant material uh, has already uh, sort of been reduced. Um, and additionally, importantly, the uh, biomass is going to be packaged at the cultivation facility in sealed containers and doesn't get removed from those containers until the extraction process is actually beginning. Um, at that point, there is odor inside the building. Um, and so the HVAC system, as, as we mentioned in our application, is going to include uh, carbon filtration scrubbers uh, to scrub that odor before uh, it is uh, ventilated from the building. Um, so as mentioned before, uh, the, the in and out traffic is primarily employees, uh, as well as uh, delivery or pickup of product. Um, we, est we provided a traffic statement and estimate compared to the existing uh, engine repair shop that there would be some increase in traffic overall, uh, shifted away from customers and towards um, toward uh, employees. Um, overall, uh, not aware of any traffic issues at this site. Uh, the sight lines at the driveway are excellent in both directions. They're uh, very long um, sight lines. Uh, and so we don't see um, a, a, any major traffic issues occurring because of this uh, facility. And certainly um, as compared to the fact that there's already a commercial establishment here the facility would be uh, connected to municipal water. Um, water use is uh, minimal and typical of a commercial operation. It's really just domestic water uh, for bathrooms, for employees. Uh, I mentioned there would also be a connection for fire protection for the sprinkler, uh, also to the, uh, to the municipal water supply. Um, the site is on septic. 
Um, we are anticipating the need to upgrade the septic system from the existing, um, and we'll be working with the health district and the Board of Health uh, to permit that appropriately. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's my understanding that um, that property at least has some Hatfield water connection. Is it Hatfield water or Whateley water? Um, you're right. I believe that it may oh, currently it is, it is, Go ahead. It is currently, yeah, it's currently Hatfield, and we understand if we connect to Whateley water uh, for um, the fire suppression for the sprinklers, that we would also need to switch over to uh, Whateley water for the... Um, for the drinking water. Um, so we've spoken to Wayne uh, and to Chief Hannum about, about that. Um, and so we anticipate going to Wayne to, to speak with about that. Okay, thank you. I have a question going back a little to the traffic flow here. Yes. Where would the truck traffic uh, be on this site? Where would they be entering and exiting? Um, so that's a good point. So there are two existing curb cuts on this site, which are separated by this island here. Um, all of the traffic associated with Three River Road would be entering at this location. Um, Carol and AI would retain this driveway for their use associated with the residents. So um, all of it would come through this existing relatively wide um, uh, driveway curb cut, uh, which uh, we, we don't anticipate needs to be expanded. Although, as I mentioned, we will be um, adding that uh, permeable gravel surface to access this portion of the site. So will trucks be going to the parking lot that's on the south side of the building? Uh, yes, they will. Um, and we have done the turning analysis to, to show <laughs> that what's needed to um, move those uh, refrigeration units is uh, able to uh, move through this area, if that's what your next question is. Okay, yeah, I, I don't see that as a problem, but what could be is trucks exiting onto River Road. I mean, if you can't get to a 90 degree uh, angle to see traffic either way, and you're only providing, well, 20 feet, 12 feet plus the, the distance there, 20 feet to the, to the edge of the road, for a, I don't know what size truck you're talking about, to come at a right angle to River Road, I, I could see trucks pulling out without even seeing traffic going by. I, I think there's an issue with trucks pulling out there. The potential, I'll put it a potential issue of trucks pulling out there because you're not at a 90 degree angle to River Road. Um, so what I can say is that I, I wouldn't want to opine off the top of my head that I'd, I'd uh, like to assess that a little more closely and, and provide a, a more thorough answer to it. Okay. Um, it, uh, we, we would likely have, you know, our, our, our freezer containers that uh, approximately, you know, once a year we'll be going back and forth between seven and three, or actually I guess can't say that with certainty, but um, the trucks that, that generally come um, are not uh, like 40 foot uh, shipping container uh, trucks. They're, they're, they're significantly smaller. We, we don't anticipate having um, such a very, very large trucks uh, coming to the site. Um, these would be much, much smaller form factor trucks. Um, but what I can say is that that we can provide an analysis of that and and like I said, give a give a detailed answer. Okay, thanks. Um, and Rock. so, I believe those are the those are the key points that I wanted to go over um, in terms of the operation, the site plan. Um, I'm happy to go through any other portions of the plan set or or discuss any other specific items. Well, I'm interested in the argument that you're making, which is that there's an existing non-conforming use there. So what do we know about the existing use in terms of its 
its history and uh, when it was established, when it became a non-conforming use. What can you tell us about that? Um, Jared, do you have the specific dates handy on how long the use has been there? Uh, I, I do not have it on hand. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure AI and Carol could furnish that, but um, uh, I, I don't have the specific dates. I, I'd be happy to go back to them and, and furnish that. Well, it's been decades. Bob Smith, would you know? No, I, I, it's been a long, well, it would be. Certainly been there since I moved here. <laughs> Probably well, in the you put a, a, a little, uh, several, three or four paragraphs together. Because if you look at se <clears throat> section 171-12, non-conforming uses, mm -hmm. the lawful use of any structure or land existing at the effective date of the adoption or subsequent amendment of this chapter may be continued or such structure or use does not conform to the provisions of this chapter. So we need to know when it was established and, and measure that date against the effective date of the bylaws, the bylaws go back to what, at least 1971, or no, maybe 1963. But anyway, you got to do your homework on that. And, and so, you know, pass that threshold so that we, A, get, or get or an agreement that it is a non-conforming use. And then the second half of your equation is, as you've already stated, to prove that the extension of this non-conforming use um, meets point A, B, C, D, and or E, whichever one's applied. Um, I think you know what I'm saying there. I do, yes. Yeah. Yep, so uh, we can yeah, absolutely it's, provide it's, the, the full history. Um, it is the category, I think, that you're in. Um, will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use and not increase the danger of uh, groundwater pollution or contamination. Right, so as you've done before, Chris, when you walk us through the, the marijuana portions, you got to walk us through 171-12 also. Sure. Um, and so then, yeah, and, and so the, the use that we're um, putting this under would be service and repair shops for, I'm sorry, <laughs> well, actually, there's, there's two categories that could potentially um, fit. Uh, there's automotive repair and servicing shops, and then there's service and repair shops for appliances, small equipment, office, and household items, other similar products, unless qualifying as a home occupation. Are you asking us to say what, and what um, AI has been doing there? Uh, so I guess the, the question being that uh, in terms of lawn mowers and other small vehicles that may not necessarily be automobiles, as to whether that would fall under automotive repair and servicing shops. Well, I mean, if you if you have a pre-existing non-conforming use, it might not fit into any of those categories. Sure. You know what I'm saying? It's it's its own use that was established before, perhaps before that table of, of use uh, was promulgated. So I'm not. I'm not sure you have to fit into any of those exactly. Fair enough. I, I guess I was thinking about it as if we if we found that we were in one of those categories and it's listed as not allowed in the zone, then that then that would be the route to show that it's non-conforming. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But uh, you're also saying that if it doesn't fit one of these categories, that 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 is equally non-conforming. Well, it it. But that, that relates to when it started and versus when the bylaws were passed. Sure. Um, I mean, if it starts, just shake it through theoretically. 
if it start if the use started after the bylaws were or some version of the bylaws were in effect and he's been operating outside of the bylaws all these years that could be a problem i guess the question is did he have did he get a building permit for that? You got to get the whole history. Did this, how was this place built? What was it built at? When was it built? What was sure. it? Um, yeah, I do. I do have. Um, I do have the property it, record. You don't have to do it piecemeal, but yeah, put it all together. When was it built? Why was it built? Who built it? Did it get a building permit at that time? What was the state of the bylaws at that time? And then did, did his business go in there first or was there some other business? In there? You know, we, you know, we have some anecdotal knowledge, but we don't have any real knowledge. Um, yeah, I believe the, the structure is listed as, I wanna say it's 1917. I'd have to go back to look at it. Um, but I guess that doesn't uh, necessarily declare that that's when the, when the use started. So right. that's a clarification that we'd have to make. Bob, help Bob. In my mind, this these are the 1989 bylaws, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so AI's business was in existence before 89 is the year that sticks in my mind. But Roger is quite correct. The um, the mm -hmm. burdens on the um, applicant to prove that. But the, the business certainly existed before those bylaws. Why do you say those? Why do you start there though, Deborah? I'm not, you know, I'm partly Roger, I'm remembering, I mean, obviously I was the town reporter for the Gazette when these bylaws were adopted and AI's business was in existence before that. So why do you say these bylaws? The so ones, the, the bylaws that we have, the table of use that was established at that time. Okay. But, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm following what you're saying as well, that we don't have a history of this business. Okay, but before whatever was adopted in 89 or it might've been 87, but there were earlier versions of the bylaws. No, we actually had a town that had four ways zoning that anything, I mean, there may have been bylaws, but, and this is where I'm gonna draw on Bob as the sort of our unofficial historian. It was anything, anywhere. We had very little zoning. Mm. And um, that's why we have establishments like the castaways, you know, where they are. And it was, it was, um, it was a, it was kind of a, a wild west in a, in a way, in terms of zoning. Well, that's what, I mean, zoning, zoning started when? Well, we had, we had a sort of minimalist zoning, but in terms of having a, a an extensive bylaw with tables of use and, and, that was really a, we got the grant from, for the planner, uh, Terry Anderson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that started what am amounted to a more professional zoning um, approach. So if I can interject, if you look at the very first page of our zoning bylaw, it says history part one, adopted by the town of Waitley on March 1, 1963, annual town meeting ended April 25, 1987 at the annual town meeting. So you're thinking of that amendment, Deborah. I believe I even have still, I think it was a four page uh, zoning bylaw. So I agree it was it was minimal, but it was not non-existent either. No, you're, you're exactly right, Roger. And I'm glad you said it was 87. It was 87. I don't know why 89 is in my mind, but you're, you're right. 87 was the year of this much more comprehensive. Um, so you've got a use that in, starts in 86, just as an example. Mm -hmm. You have to show that under the, well, under the 63 bylaws that it was I don't know what he would show, uh, that it wasn't allowed or was allowed. If it was allowed under the 63 bylaws, it's not non-conforming, I don't. Oh no, it's well, not conforming under the 87 bylaws. But anyway, I think we're- Your point. All right, let's let them do the homework and we'll figure it out. Yeah. 
that's entirely fair. Uh, but just to chase that one last point, because I do want to make sure we, we respond accurately. Um, if, if there was an anything goes by law in 1963, and then in 1987, that changed to create uses, that would be the effective date of the adoption or subsequent amendment of this chapter. So that would be the moment in this thought experiment that the use becomes non-conforming. Yeah, I think you're right about that, yeah. So then that becomes the key date that we're, that we're working with and not necessarily 1967. 63, but yeah. Or 63, sorry. Without binding ourselves, that, that seems to be a, a good working thesis. Okay. Could you just, just repeat the year that really counts for me, please? <laughs> Well, it's either it's either a two day. Both should be referenced anyway. March 1, 1963, or April 25, 1987. What was the April date of 87? What did you say? April in the 87? April 25. 25. Thank you. Okay, so yes, we we will collect the appropriate history and um, and collate it into uh, a clear statement as to why we believe that applies. And so then now I'm looking at the marijuana section of the bylaw 171-28.6, and it does say that in, well, at least it defines marijuana product manufacturer. And then, so I'm assuming that somewhere in there, you'll point us to where it allows for the manufacturing of the product. So again, you know, you'll walk us through it. So I, I think, you know, we're gonna be continuing this hearing. It seems like that's obvious to you to do. Yeah, good three. Uh, research on the, tr on the trucks entering and exiting on the, not conforming aspect, you get us the lease redacted. Um, I don't need to cut you off if you have more to say now, but. Um, no, yeah, so I just, uh, you asked the question about the, the manufacturer. Um, is that just, is that to ensure that we're applying the correct use and the use that we're proposing under the definition of marijuana product manufacturer? Yes. The question. Okay. Yeah. And so then that, that definition is an entity license to obtain manufacture process and package marijuana and marijuana products um, to deliver to establishments and transfer marijuana project products to other uh, marijuana establishments, but not to consumers. Um, so I believe that we, you know, as I just described the, the project, and as we've noted in the application, that we are receiving marijuana from a cultivator and then processing it uh, into oil, which is itself a product, uh, which also then gets used to create other products, and that that will be trans uh, transferred to retailers and not to consumers. Um, and then additionally, the CCC license that is being pursued for this facility is that of a marijuana product manufacturer. Um, so we, I do believe that as to what the proposed use qualifies as, I think that uh, to me is pretty clear. But I don't know if there's more detail that you would want to see to back that up. I don't know what the board thinks about that. But I don't know. We well, I don't have anything more on that topic. Is there anyone else on the board? No. We have a hand raised. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, uh, this is Mike Becta. I have three questions. The first of which is reiterating what Mr. Olasky said about the sight line. I've had three close calls of getting clipped coming out of that establishment because of the trees and whatnot as you look to the left looking north. The second is, I noticed the property, uh, I should say the 
county line between Hampshire and Franklin County is approximate? Is that within a foot, 10 feet, 20 feet? Because it looks awful close to the corner of the building. So if it nicks the building, then wouldn't that also possibly be a jurisdiction for Hatfield to weigh in on? And thirdly, is when they get done with processing the biomass, what happens with the with the remnants, what they don't use, where does that go? How is it disposed of? Where do you live, sir? Uh, Christian Lane. And I also own property on River Road, which would be subject to whatever increased uh, traffic may or may not be coming our way. Okay. Okay, well, Chris, do you want to answer any of those, all of those questions? Um, so the the question on the vehicle movements, again, I'd, I'd like to go back and, and analyze that a little bit more closely. Um, the town line that we have, the town and county line that we're showing there is based on monuments that were located in the field. Um, I would need to consult with my surveyor to get the precise accuracy of that line. So I don't want to uh, say exactly at this moment, but I do know that we found at least two uh, bounds associated with the town line. So uh, we feel that we have that line um, pretty tightly. Um, and uh, Jared, you're probably better to discuss um, the yep. end result of the biomass. Uh, I do know that under the CCC regulations, um, any waste cannabis must be destroyed and quote, rendered unusable um, or, or some language yep. like that. Yep, that's exactly right. Yep, it just has to be rendered unusable. We'll, we'll mix it with um, the example that people use is, you know, with kitty litter or manure or something really unpleasant. Um, and then it's uh, stored in a secure uh, waste management bin that itself is secured and then is taken away because at that point it is considered no longer cannabis. It's um, just waste. Okay, Chris, and uh, I didn't catch your name, but thank you very much for the answers to those questions. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much for submitting those questions. I, I would also uh, submit that, Chris, I, I think we are addressing some of the landscaping to make sight lines to improve sight lines coming out of there as part of our landscaping, are we not? Um, yes, uh, again, I'll, I, I, as the engineer, <laughs> I want the opportunity to make sure I've, I've uh, got exactly the right answer <laughs> that, that I intend. Um, well, great. Chris, Thank you. Chris, I understand that. I'm not, I'm not putting you on the spot right now, but I'm just relaying some concerns that I had just to make aware that there are concerns there and just to keep everybody safe because nobody needs an accident. And with bicyclists on River Road and everything else, it is a well-traveled uh, traveled path. Agreed. Th thank you very much for that. And um, we'd be happy if, if you would, uh, uh, I can, um, I would be great to get in touch with you after this. I I'd love to work with you to make sure that, um, that uh, bikers and pedestrians and automotive use of that, of River Road is kept as safe as possible. I don't think anybody, um, I, 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 nobody wants to have accidents there less than us. Um, you know, we want to be good neighbors and, and uh, members of the community and, and anything that we can do uh, to reduce that, we would love to, to investigate. Well, I have a follow-up question to this gentleman concerning that property line. I'm looking at um, page 92, which is in section C, number seven, Marijuana establishments shall have a minimum 50 foot setback from all property lines, except retailers shall have a minimum 20 foot setback. So how do you deal with that when your building is on the property line? Or no, no, it's on the town line. Can you show, put that, put that back up again? Absolutely. Yeah, um, it's on the town line. So we, oh, I'm, I'm not a co-host anymore. I'm giving it back to you. Great. There you go. Um, yeah, so we uh, would own both sides of the town line. So for zoning purpose, I believe the, that for zoning purposes, that means that uh, that would not qualify as a property line for setback. Um, right. But, but what is the dimension from the line? Uh, 
Um, I do not have that labeled. Um, I would have to we gotta measure get. that, which I can't do readily right now. So you got to put that on your list. We have to get that measurement. Hey, Chris, I have another, there's Fred Orlowski, another comment related to the parking. Uh, I know you're trying to use existing driveway entrances to River Road, but have you thought of, you know, you're putting most of the parking on the south side of the building, but using existing entrance. Have you thought of coming straight out to River Road with a, a, everything on the south side of the building as a parking lot and a, a new entrance to access River Road? Because the one that's here now is more was used for customers coming in, in and out of the building. And I assume your, your business there is not going to have customers coming in and out of the building routinely. So just an option if you could Think about reconfiguring the parking to be all on the south side, and then you would have a direct 90 degree access to River Road. Um, so that is uh, great. The, the answer is we did not explore that because we thought it was optimal to reuse the existing curb cut. It usually is, but you make an excellent point, um, and I think that that is well worth uh, exploring to see if that would work. I like that idea too, Chris. I think, I think that's something worth exploring. Was that Jared? Uh, yeah, sorry, that was Jared. Yeah. What is what is it going to be the security for this? Uh, I, I guess the building would have security, but is the is the property itself the least portion going to be secure in any way? As far as I mean, fencing or I don't know what else you put there. Other landscaping, I guess you'd put around, but yeah. So the the intention is to is not to fence the entire property. Um, it would be. Uh, monitored uh, through cameras, uh, avoiding any blind spots around the building so that we can see the whole thing. Um, I think Jared is better to, to comment on any detail in there though. Sure, yeah. So the, the Triple C does ask that we not discuss uh, the, the security plan, um, but we have discussed what are uh, in a public forum, but we have discussed it with um, the Waitley Police Department, um, certainly for the context of Seven River Road, and we have uh, pass on that, um, and we will ha have a robust security uh, system on uh, on Three River Road. And I would add that it would increase the security of the area, um, given that we have um, so much security infrastructure there. Okay. Doing my, doing my eyeball measurement, I see one dimension of 40 feet above to the north of the closest point of the to the street line. So I'm I'm guessing you're going to be tight with that 50 foot requirement. Um, right, uh, and actually, we did um, include this in the letter. I didn't highlight it uh, while I was speaking. The existing building is less than 50 feet from the property line, which is at 50 feet is in the marijuana bylaw. It is also the general dimensional regulation for the AR1 zone. Um, so that would be part of the existing non-conforming request that we're making. Should that be denied, I suppose that that portion of the building could be modified to respect the 50 foot setback. Um, but, and I apologize, that wasn't intentional. I just uh, uh, missed that in my initial presentation. I sh should have highlighted that when we were talking about the nonconformance. So 
So when we're talking about a non-conforming situation, you can have a non-conforming use or you can have a non-conforming structure. And it sounds like you have both here. Correct. Definitely want to address that in the context of when the place was built versus when the bylaws were. Right, and particularly that piece of the building, I suppose. Particularly that piece of the building. Yeah. Is this the, is this on the west side or the north side? Just to make sure I'm tracking. Um, that, that's this portion right here. That's the east side. Sorry, I'm, I'm just on the phone. That's the oh, east side. sorry, yes, it's the, it's the side close, it's the, the portion of the building closest to River Road. Right, okay, the wooden, the wooden entranceway, I gotcha. <clears throat> oh, how about the um, host community agreement? You were going to submit that? Um, we submitted the one for Three River Road. There was some mix up on the, uh, for the other project for the retail. Mayor, um, uh, you, you have that? We do. Uh, yes, we have that as well. Oh, no, I'm, oh, asking, I'm sorry. I'm asking, He's asking if they have apologies. it. Yeah, I'm not, apologies. Let, let me let me see. I've got to get back into my computer. So. I do believe we submitted the HCA for Three River Road back when this application went in. <sighs> Would you be able to take the, the map? Is there some way I can get around looking at this map so I can get into my computer? Right. Right. It fills the whole screen. <laughs> That's my main problem. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we're looking for Three River Road. Might it have, it probably, do you think it might have been in with something else? I don't, I mean, it wouldn't have been part of the application, would it? It probably would have happened after that. I don't have it at what I'm looking at for a list of documents. Okay. It's, there's nothing labeled that, but of course there's always narrative stuff and everything that is in with this, with the, I've got special permit application, special permit plans. Might it have been part of either, either of those things? Legal note um, list. Yeah, I would have thought that it was separate. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I didn't get it, but <laughs> right, <laughs> it's venturing to email territory. <laughs> would um, it be po would it be posted on the um, agenda? Because I have that up. I can share the screen for that. Uh, probably for maybe for the January for the June 3rd. I month. have that. I have that. Let me just. Let me, let me just I don't go think, to, I don't think it's there for tonight's meeting, but. And this is, does anything look familiar here? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's possibly in that application document. Uh, it's, it was a while since that went in. Regardless, okay. if, if it's not readily available, we certainly have it and okay. provide it. All right, yeah, so why don't you put that on your checklist of things right. to get to us. And I, I believe it was inadvertently submitted with the 424 State Road as, as the HCA also. But oh, we'll, we'll that's, make sure that it's, that it's submitted for certain. All right, so our next meeting is a uh, August 5th meeting. Does that give me enough time for you to get your materials? Um. I, I would think so, yes. I mean, of course, we're meeting next week, as you know, but I, I, would, I didn't think that was a good... Uh, that, that would be very optimistic. Uh, too optimistic. <laughs> All right, so Mary, we have uh, one on August 5th, which is the pump station at 640. Should we put this on for seven? 
Okay. 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 Any other questions? No. All right. Um, I've been taking notes and, and we look forward to providing all of this information. All right, great. Well, we'll see you next week. We'll also see you August 5th. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone who's, so we do have our next hearing folks in. Um, so anyone who wants to leave can leave from this hearing. Okay. All right, do we need any time or you wanna just jump right in to it? I'm good. Okay, are folks here for the, um, would have been the 7.30 hearing? Yeah, you cannot. You can unmute. Okay. I'm Sarah. Take us. Put in the application. Hi, Sarah. Okay, good. Um, so I Mary, Mary, whenever you're ready, le read the legal notice for her hearing. This also was written mentioning the June third start of the hearing, but then that was moved to tonight, so the date is off a little. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. And Sarah, how do you pronounce your last name? Zikas. 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 29, 2021, Sarah Zikas applied for a special permit to use the former Hitchcock Brewery located at 129 Christian Lane and owned by Ms. Zikas and Louis Goldstein as a live work space for their son. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley zoning bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. Uh, it's followed by all the access information to join this meeting by computer or phone and signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals. And it ran in the Greenfield Recorder on May 20th and 27. Okay, Sarah, so what we always ask the um, applicant is uh, are you satisfied with the way that legal notice was worded? Yes. Okay. All right, so welcome to our board. And um, I'm Roger Lipton, Deborah Carney, uh, Ron Smith, Fred Orlowski, and Kristen here? I thought she was here. Yes, she's here. There she is. Here. These are our five board members. And Mary is our secretary. So why don't you tell us what you want to do? Uh, I do have one question first. Do you have any association or did you have any association with the Hitchcock Brewery? Or brewery? No, we purchased the property from them last April. Okay, so you never had any ownership interest in them or anything like that? Nope. Okay, all right, so tell us what you want to do. So uh, we just want to turn the, the brewery into like a house live workspace for my son. Um, he's a musician and I don't know, we just all want to live on the same property and, uh, he's 28 as a dog. I don't know. We just, it's a nice place, nice spot back there. It's, we don't have any use for it. It's a big building. Um, we don't want to use it for commercial. So, you know, just a residential spot where he can do his studio work out of there. And that's about it. All right, so I understand that the building inspector had sent a letter um, to you. 
So how did that all come about that you were interacting with the building inspector? Well, I didn't really, we'd moved from Wisconsin where like you were talking before, it was kind of the wild west of zoning and stuff like that. So we didn't ever have to have a permit before. So I didn't realize I would have to get a zoning variance or whatever for him to stay there. I was like, oh, that's a cool building. When we bought it, I was like, you can live there. We'll renovate, you know, we'll do all that stuff. And so then the neighbor complained to the building department and as soon as they told me, I was like, oh, okay, you know, like, I'll, I'll move forward with whatever I have to do uh, to, you know, make it legitimate and legal and all those things. So here I am. So he's living there now? Well, he's like, has his stuff there, stays there sometimes, stays here, cooks, eats, laundry, you know, everything's done up here because uh, there's no kitchen or by the way. Hmm? What's his name, by the way? Jack, with my last name, Hagus. With your last name. So I'm not, you know, that familiar with your property. Um, are others on the board familiar with it? I am not at all. I am. Kristen, you're muted. <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with it as well. You are? Yes. So as a building inspector, issued any permits, building permits for any work at the, at this? No, he says we can't do anything until we go through you guys to get the zoning changed because he said that it was commercial. So I didn't even realize it was commercial. You know, I just figured it's part of our residence. So I was confused, but you know, I'll do whatever I have to do to. I believe we saw a lot, saw the letter. That's how I know about it. Mary, do you have that in the file? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Hold on just a moment, please. Be able to put it up? Uh, well, I don't know how to put it up. Uh. <laughs> um, would it be, hang on, Mary, let me just grab, um, let me grab this. It's up on my screen right now, but. Does it look like the application or is it more a letter? You oh, know, it's a letter. Okay, so let me do this then, Mary. You can. Um, You can share your screen if you wish right now. Uh, and how do I do that? If you go to the, go toward the bottom of your frame and you should see an icon saying share screen. Hold on. But, but I don't know if, but if you're on a separate computer, um, that may not work. What do you mean separate computer? I mean, if she's, if she, I mean, if she's, I mean, sometimes I, I have a sense that Mary may have a separate computer open and one that she's doing Zoom on. No, I only. No, like, okay. So I then just got the one left. <laughs> okay. Then if you go to the very bottom of your frame, you should see a share okay, screen. Okay. Now I've got the screen the right size. I can actually see the bottom of the frame. There's sh uh, share, share screen. screen. Just click on the little. Yep. Click on that green share I, screen. I did. And now I've got another box that says things like, okay, maybe it's asking what I want to share because. Yes. And, and you should have a menu and maybe click on that there. Here. Oh yeah. Okay. We're on the way. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. But now you need to click on it. If that, is that the Baudry letter? Well, yes. Uh, okay. Is that who you're talking about? Ms. Talking about the building inspector Hawkins. Oh, you want, I thought you wanted that one. Okay. okay. Hawkins. Let me see. Okay. I think it's the Hawkins so to right Peterson. There, even though they're not persons. It's just, oh. the, this stuff is all. Um, oh, no. It's a 2021 letter, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe the legal notice, Sarah, I guess. No. Well, no. that's a legal notice. I don't see a. I don't see it up there. So, well, I'll just say that he. So Jim Hawkins sent me a letter saying that, you know, I needed to file for a building permit. So I called him and he said, file for a building permit and I'll deny it. And then you, I'll refer you to the zoning board. And so I was like, okay, so I did that. And then um, I didn't realize I had to do a, yet another application to the zoning board. So then he sent me another letter and he was like, why didn't you apply to the zoning board? And I was like, I thought I did. So just being unfamiliar with the process, 
-hmm. it took me a minute to get everything in order. But as soon as I, you know, realized that I was had done the wrong thing, I went and applied. In your motivation, Sarah. But we want to see the legal letter. Why? Because we're familiar with how the building inspector writes things up. And he often puts useful information in there for us that yeah. puts us in a certain direction. Okay. So being able to put my, and I believe I saw it. Um, and I only seen it from you, Mary. I think okay. so. Mary, Mary, if you would stop sharing your screen. Okay. Okay. So, okay, great. Let me just take one more look at what we've got here. Um, okay, Roger, you think you've seen it. This is all of the documentation that we have for that, that hearing. And I'm just gonna take a look at the PDF just to see if that might possibly be included. And unfortunately it is not. But there is some useful information that I saw there right off the bat. Okay, do you want me to, what did you want to- scroll through the whole thing and then we'll, we'll circle back to this eventually. Okay. So let's look at your application. Okay. Um, applying for a special permit, okay. Now, where did you get, Sarah, where did you get this category live workspace? Because that's not a, a, a really oh. recognized category in our zoning bylaws. Oh, I don't know. I just, that was what the use was. He, when he told me what to say, just to say what I intended to do with it. So he's going to live there, but he's going to have his studio space there. All and right. I think when you live somewhere, you can just have a studio space, but. Downstairs and have a studio upstairs. Yeah. So. It's not a commercial space. It's just his own personal studio. I understand. So we, we may end up wanting to take a view of the, the property because the lack of familiarity with it. Okay. It was a little bit handcuffing us thinking about it, but okay. so downstairs, so it's a two-story structure. Mm -hmm. It's, it I got, think it's let me, originally. Let me, let me just ask the question. So has it got okay. a bathroom and a kitchen in it? It doesn't have a kitchen. It has a bathroom. It has a septic system. Oh. It did have a bar. We took the bar out, uh, but it, we want to put a kitchen in. Okay. And, a, and laundry hookup is the goal. And it's physically attached to the, the house portion? I'm sorry, the barn is not attached to our house. It's way at the back of the property. So is this what we're talking about, a, a barn? It is a barn that they converted into a brewery. All right. Okay. okay. Scroll down, let's, let's see the sketch that she's got there. That's just like a floor plan of the building. Of the barn and building? Yeah, of the barn, just showing where we would want to put the kitchen. And I wasn't sure what I was supposed to put in there, I guess. Oh, you, you did an okay job. Um, we just need to understand sort of the, the facts on the ground before we start brainstorming a solution. Um, you, can't, you can't right angle that, can you, Deborah? No, I can only make the size yeah. to let you see. So we're looking north here. Um, I know what you want, Roger. No, I can't turn it. All right. Um, yeah, no, I can't. So right now it's kind of just a big open space with a few uh, like those those rooms are already there and the bathroom's already there and the utility room's already there. Like that's the way the walls are now. Um, and this entrance to the upstairs is outside via like a set of stairs outside. Okay. I think you're probably gonna wanna take a view of this property, don't you think? Definitely, because I'm a little, I mean, the a question I have is that are we having two residential spaces on a single lot and is the lot going to accommodate that we have 10 acres oh you have 10 acres okay yeah. and then we need you know the frontage requirements and and such but um it's it but i don't know the property at all and so i okay. definitely want to take a look myself yeah now do you really know what zone it's in do i know yeah do you know what zone it's in it's residential. 
Okay, because I thought I heard you say commercial at one point. Well, that they got, they must have gotten a variance to make that building commercial. They had a brewery and a pub there, or whatever you call it. Like they had people coming there and a bar. But forget about that for a minute. Okay. That Hitchcock brewery's come and gone. In fact, they got an agricultural exemption. Apparently, and it was controversial. It didn't, okay. it didn't come through our board. But each piece of property in the town is in one zone or another. Many are in agricultural, residential. Others are in the commercial. We usually put it on the, on the one who's applying, which is you, to figure out what zone you're in. Do you know what zone you're in? Uh, no, I will have to make sure I know what zone. If you don't know, that's a fair answer. Yes. I think it's probably, isn't that agricultural residential, Frank? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's AR. All right. I think it's AR too. It's beyond the 400 feet, yeah. I'd say. Just for the board's reference, we our new improved form has a better box for zone because it's okay. universally ignored and, and, and a run over with the address. So oh, okay. I'm, I missed that. I'm looking forward to improved applications in the future, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, so I think it's AR. Uh, one, and then we got to take a look at it, and, and that'll give us time to dig up the building inspector's letters. I think there were two. There were two, yeah. Yeah, and so when do we want to take a, a view, folks? I we are away next week, all week. But other than that, we're kind of always around, or oh. I'm always around. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Are you around Saturday, Sarah? This Saturday, like the day after tomorrow? Yes. Yep. We'll do 11 or 10? Uh, 11. 11. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to meet at your property. So what's the address again? I don't know it's gave. 129 Christian Lane. 129 Christian. It'll be in, in, we'll consider an informal session you'll just show us around we're not going to really ask any tough legal questions we're just, just okay. get eyes on the property and get an understanding of it. okay it should take 15 or 20 minutes that's about it and then and then we'll reconvene well are you away next week just during the week, the five days, Monday through Friday. You could do the call. You actually have oh, a... I could do a call. I could do a call, yeah. Well, that's right, you could. Folks, do we want to do it on July 1st, um, which is our next meeting, or wait till August? It's, I'm, I'm fine I'm, with either one. Either one's fine with me. Fine. Saturday was no good. Saturday the twenty sixth was no good. No, no that we are doing we are doing the view, Kristen, on Saturday at okay. eleven. At right. eleven. So we're now talking about whether we want to meet, uh, whether we want to reconvene on this particular hearing on our hearing on the first. Second How many do we have on the first? Okay. We only have one on the first. Which oh. Is, <laughs> which is the? Um, I, don't, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> Is, is there just, one? <laughs> I had all this stuff together and now it's disappeared. Well, I, it, I believe we have Chris and his uh, group that the, that's looking for a retail marijuana shop at the Sugarloaf shops. Oh my gosh, they're back. Okay. All right. Hmm. The agenda says there's only one. Okay. I got so used to three and four. <laughs> For well, July 1, Bob? Yeah, July 1 is just the um, public hearing on the DMCTC at 424 State Road Sugarloaf Shops. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. the only thing on the agenda. Okay. And that's 640, Bob? Yes. Okay. Well, why don't we set this one down for 730? Okay. And then Mary. The agenda has to be changed. Do you have to right. change the agenda? Yeah, Mary, you'll have to change the agenda. Right. Okay.
Sarah, if you follow that, we're going to view your property Saturday. Yep. 11 a.m. And then we'll do another Zoom conference at 7.30 on uh, the 1st. can't believe it's July already, but it will be. And Mary, I'll work with you and you can dig up the, those building inspector letters. We have a, a Mr. Beshta. Yes, I have a quick question. As a as an abutter, they got a notice to this. Am I welcome to that view as well on Saturday? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. But it's primarily it's a view. It's not a, really a question session. But you're welcome. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lipton. Roger, I really think I don't have that letter. I think because I was looking at the property because of another question. I had like two or three letters to the Petersons from the brewery era uh, talking about their situation, but I don't, now I'm not sure if I saw this letter or not about doing the home thing. I know I saw it. It's no guarantee that I can find it, but I'll I just, put it on my Sarah, Sarah, do you have a copy of the letter? I probably do. Oh, that's uh, but I don't want to make any promises. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me, but I probably do. Well, uh, let me know on Saturday. Let problem. me know on Saturday, Sarah, if you find it. Okay. And if you find it, okay. if you can make photocopies of the one or both of them, that would be great. Okay. 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 Deal. Roger, I assume on our side visit, we want to see the uh, inside of the building as well. Yes. Of the yeah. bar building, yes. Yeah. I'm just outside, but inside as well. Okay. Yeah. I'll just make sure I can you hang on for just a second. I'll just text him. He's, he's in New York, but I'll ask him if, it, if it's open. Uh, let me just make sure we have the keys. He's got all his musical equipment in there, so he doesn't like to leave it open. <laughs> I'll figure, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to get it unlocked if, if he doesn't have right. it unlocked. But don't worry about it. We'll get in. Great. So we'll conclude this meeting. You other board members have to finish on the um, yes. uh, Urban. the Herbert matter, but I'll I'll say goodbye until Saturday. Okay. 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 Roger, before we leave this meeting. I think there was a letter from one of the abutters. Should we be looking at that to see if we have any further uh, questions from the abutter or, or need to do something with that? Or, or is that something for the next meeting? Oh, was that from the gentleman who just spoke? No. 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 We, we have a letter from the Beaudries who are neighbors next. to the former brewery. Okay, hang on. Let me... Let me grab it. Um, Andrew just spoke. Um, hang on. The Baudry's. Okay, there is. I oh, don't, they were, yeah, they were. The Baudry's were here, I think. They, they may not be here anymore. Okay, there's no letter on this. Um, it's on Mar Mary's list of files. When Mary pulled up hers, there was a Baudry letter in there, I think. Yeah. Okay, yes. hang on one sec. Let me. Um, yeah, but if he's gone now, well, I think... I, to my knowledge, they were not on our Zoom meeting this evening. I didn't see them. Oh, okay. I'm having. So, who was that man who was there? There were uh, the Bechtas. Bechtas. Oh, okay, I got mixed up. Sorry. Sorry. Mike Bechta. Okay. Okay, hang on one sec. Um, there may be a, I'm gonna have to duck out and go back in. I can't seem to, oh, here, hang on. It's on Mary's list. It's on Mary's, on Mary's list. list. Mary's list. Yeah, okay. it, it's in the. <laughs> it's not on the Whaley Town list. Okay, so Mary, do you wanna share the screen again? Yep. Yep, hold on. Back over here, reduce. 
share screen. I forgot you couldn't see it anymore. <laughs> okay. Here's the Baudry letter. Oh, good. Okay. That's, I knew I saw it somewhere. I'm so zoomed out these days. You just need to double click it. Uh, you can't see that? Um, no, all I can see is your list, but I can't see the double oh, click. I opened it and then I made it bigger. Uh, okay, hang, um, can, can anyone else see it? Is it just me? No, no, no I can see it. All right, let me see if I can. It says I'm screen, yeah, you can see the list. Yeah, that's all, let me just so check. Maybe, I had it up, now I, I closed it out again and. Did Mary click share screen at the bottom of hers? Yes, and it says. Oh, yeah, that's that's what's shared. But, oh, I know what, you know what, Mary, you're gonna have, this is a PDF, isn't it? So oh. that's gonna have to get downloaded in some, oh. let me, hang on, let me see if I can do it. No, cause I don't have, um, you would have to, you're gonna have to go in there and click open right where this is. Can you see where I am? I'm looking at my stuff now. I gotta go back in where you are. I know this is, I know. I, I, if, I don't if, know if Baudry letter is highlighted in my menu because I opened it last or because you're on it, but where am I supposed to go? <laughs> you see, I don't know if you can see where my arrow is, but there's an open with a PDF icon the Adobe icon here. Uh, I'm not even, are you, I'm looking at my list of documents for this. Yeah. Can you, are you, I don't think you're there, are you? Can you see it on the screen, Mary? You're, can you see this, the open letter as if you were looking and reading it? Yeah, not at the moment because I got rid of it. Uh, I could see it. Get back to that point where you can see it. Okay, um, I'm opening it now. Okay, and then maybe try sharing your screen again at that moment. Well, I'm, I've always been sharing the screen. Should I stop share and start it over again? Um, let's try something else. Let's try a new share. No, I can't get in that way. Um, okay. You just need to double click. Yeah, I mean, I'm very surprised okay. I can't get this open. Can she just read it to us? I could, I've read longer. <laughs> Okay, let's try that. <laughs> we can go back to that. Okay, here we are. This is dated May 28th. And looks like she left it with Lynn who sent it to me. To Waitley Zoning Board of Appeals from Michael and Marion Beaudry abutters to 129 Christian Lane, Waitley, Mass. Following is our list of concerns due to the special permit request of Sarah Zickus and Lewis Goldstein to make the barn on the back portion of their property at 129 Christian Lane into a live slash workspace for their son. One, the entrance to both properties is on a shared or co-owned driveway. This driveway continues onto a farm road that was improved for farm use. Are there limits or agreements to the use of the shared driveway? Is the farm road legal for the use of an additional residence? Two, living space. Said living space has been occupied for the last year by their son. During the COVID restrictions, several out-of-state vehicles have come and gone to visit and work with their son. Once the COVID restrictions are lifted, will the traffic increase to this residence? Three, workspace. Is the workspace going to be used as a studio for creating music? If so, will this cause additional noise and traffic 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Traffic has been at all hours of the night, of the day and night. Four, future accessory apartments. If approved, could future apartments be added to this property? And the next paragraph says, our concerns are for ourselves and our neighbors. In the past, we were never notified by the zoning board that our prior neighbor was converting a livestock barn to a brewery. We were never notified by the zoning board that the brewery would be having tastings on Thursdays and Saturdays. 
traffic coming and going to the brewer brewery was incredible. Sometimes as many as 30 cars would be speeding up and down the farm road and onto our shared driveway. Commercial delivery trucks were constant. How can we be sure that this residence and workspace won't someday be used for concerts or have multiple people living there? We never expected a busy brewery in our backyard, so we are a little concerned how a residence and workspace might morph into something bigger than imagined. We work hard to maintain our property and once loved looking out to see farming and animals roaming the pastures, but now feel our efforts are compromised by a big building used for housing and traffic. Thank you, Michael and Marion Beaudry. And I'll, I'll certainly email this to everybody just so you'll all have a copy. Oh, that's great. Okay, so Sarah, what you should do at the next hearing is uh -huh. be prepared to respond to these various neighbor concerns. Okay. If possible, tell us how those concerns won't come to fruition. Okay. Uh, the part you do not the part you do not have to address is the part that says the Waitley zoning board never notified him. Mary did some excellent research and as I mentioned at the beginning, the zoning board never had anything to do with the Hitchcock brewery. They got in on a agricultural exemption. And so I can understand why the neighbor thinks we didn't give him notice, but it was not our um, project, if you will, we had nothing to do with it. So that's okay. nothing, nothing you have to address. Okay. But uh, I'll get a copy, an emailed copy of that letter so I can make my list. Yes. Mary? Yes, I'll yeah. send that okay. out. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, oh, and also that co-owned co driveway, whatever you can give us on the legal status of that driveway would be useful. Okay, I have it from the sale. I have the driveway agreement. Um, I also actually, contacted the surveyor because it, the farm road is actually on our property. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference, but I was just trying to understand myself. It could, it could make some difference. Yeah, give us what you've got. The more is better usually. Okay, and just, just so that I understand, isn't it better for it not to be commercial and go back to residential or it just, it's a, a moot point and it's just a totally different thing. I would say it's better to be residential and not commercial. As I hear the neighbor's fears, he's afraid that under the guise of being quote unquote residential, you'll sneak in aspects that are more similar to commercial use. Right, I'm not going to, but I'll address all those questions. Sarah, could you just give me your email, please? Sure, it's my name. Sarah Hickis at gmail.com. Is that Sarah with an H or not? Yes. Okay. Roger, it's, Roger since the application talks about uh, what use, workspace, do we need to, or do they need to be clear what they're asking for? Because we don't have any such designation. Well, use is, use is one thing, and then if whatever we decide on, Shouldn't we then decide on whether it's allowable workspace or what kind of work activity would be allowed there? Yeah, I think next time what we'll have to do is just go through the what is allowed in, under the bylaw as possible. Yeah. Uh, I think Deborah mentioned it that is in this creation of a second structure on, on a single lot. So yeah, I mean, if it's not allowed, I mean, if just just so that I can wrap my head around this, if if say we took my son out of it and we bought this property and I wanted that to be my pottery studio, there would be no zoning anything because but that's my live workspace. But that falls under if I live here, I can also work from home, right? You can, but if you start putting kitchens and bathrooms in a separate structure. No, I understand that part. I'm yeah, just trying but to no, but, that work but, part. Right. You can certainly work in any space on your property, but once you start putting livable aspects to it, kitchens, bathrooms, you suddenly create two residences on a single lot. 
Right. I, I totally, I totally okay. understand that part and that I need zoning to say that that's okay, but I'm just talking about the work part of it. It's just, sure, it's just could, video you, space. Yeah. If you had a, you had a building on your property and you wanted to make pottery in it, that's, that doesn't fall under our purview at all. Right. And neither would if he's a musician and he wants to play music out there because that's his thing. It's the he same. Can, he can play music anywhere he wants. But once once you make it a living space, right. that's right. a different aspect. Right. I understand. OK. Yeah. That's good. And I didn't get the tag end of your email. It's uh, Sarah Zikas at gmail.com. OK. Thank you. All right, we'll see you Saturday. Okay, thank you. You know what that? Yeah. Bye. Bye. So I guess technically we are uh, continuing a hearing that began, uh, I don't know, last century. Um, and uh, I was in receipt, and uh, I believe that Mary is in receipt because it was sent to ZBA at waitley.org as well. Um, a, an email from Stephen J. Herbert. Uh, withdrawing without prejudice um, the application for the establishing of marijuana cultivation on land at State Road Map 32, Lot 6 in Waitley. So since it has officially been sent to us, all that remains for us, the three of us that we're hearing the case, Kristen, Deborah, and I, is to vote to accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Can someone move that? I move it. Okay, is there a second? Great. I vote yes to accept. I need to think about it. No, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Kristen? Kristen, you're muted. I think we have to hear you. Kristen, unmute. I vote yes. I don't know why that keeps muting. It just keeps automatically muting me. Okay. Gremlin. Okay, so Mary, that is officially accepted. Um, that withdrawn without prejudice and we are done with that issue. Okay, thank you, Bob. <laughs> who, who, moved and, who moved and who seconded on this thing? I've, uh, I, I moved. moved and Kristen seconded. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And you do have a copy of that, Mary? I do. It's Yeah, it was dated May 26th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, are, are we done? We are done. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Festa. I have just one quick question. I just want to thank the board for listening to my questions and concerns this evening. Absolutely. Have we a good night. All, we're always Mike, happy with citizens come. They pass the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.